Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Star Wars The Black Series 6 inch scale Captain Phasma. That's right, one of the coolest looking new characters from the upcoming Force Awakens film is finally in my hands. Series 2, especially this figure here, has been pretty hard to come by so far. So let's go ahead and finally take a look at Captain Phasma. As you can see, she comes in that same style window box packaging that we've seen for all of the new Episode 7 figures so far. There's just a straight black box with a nice bright red on the inside and fully showcases our action figure within. If you flip it around to the back side, there's not much there except for a very faint image of Captain Phasma as she appears in the film. So let's go ahead and rip her out of that box and take a closer look at the action figure. Uh, overall, I really love the look of this one. Of course, I really love the look of the Captain Phasma character. And I know we don't know anything about her yet. And yes, I said her, because this is the first ever female Stormtrooper in one of the films. And on top of that, she's wearing an amazingly cool, shiny, silver set of armor, which just really makes her stand out. And I know I'm not alone in already loving the design of this character. We don't know anything about her yet, but she's totally got that Boba Fett effect going on, where she's just cool looking, so everybody wants this figure. Uh, the paint deco is really nice on there. You can see she's made uh, with a very nice kind of metallic silver paint job. Uh, I am still keeping my fingers crossed that Hasbro at some point gives us a really nice vac metalized Phasma action figure. That way she looks all chromed out the way she appears in the film. Um, but for the time being, this is still a really nice paint job. Uh, you can see under the right lighting there, it does have a very nice shine to it. So it very much stands out. And for the most part, the paint is very clean. Um, I do only have a few areas where it's not perfect. For one example, the hands kind of look like the paint is glopped on a little thick. You can see it's uh, not as clean as I'd like it to be, and it is laid on a little thick over the fingers. Um, but for the most part, I don't really have any complaints about it all the way down the armor. Uh, it's pretty clean, and it's definitely very, very bright. Uh, the only other place where I've got a minor paint uh, flaw is the red seam that's running down the outside of her cape. Um, it's just not laid on quite thick enough. You can see it's a little crooked and there's some black showing through still. Uh, the weird thing about that is almost every single version of Phasma I've looked at in figure form so far has had that same kind of problem. So, um, But otherwise, I really like the overall paint deco. The sculpt is very nice as well. I love the style of the armor there. Of course, she's got that newer model Stormtrooper helmet, which looks really great here. Uh, and same with the armor. You can see underneath the cape there, there's some really nice details along the back, um, really nice details along the side. So overall, I feel like it's a very nice looking action figure. Now, the cape that she's wearing is another unique piece to her look. Uh, she sports this black cape that kind of drapes over her left shoulder. And it was done in a solid plastic on this. Um, I was kind of hoping we would see a cloth cape on this particular figure. With the Black Series being more articulated than most of the other figures, um, we've seen a lot of cloth in this line, you know. Kylo Ren had uh, a cloth cloak on, so I was kind of hoping her cape would be cloth, but they went the plastic route. Um, I will note that there's some interesting sculpted details on the back of the cape. Um, you can see it looks like there are some strips of extra fabric kind of hanging off of up here on the shoulder, kind of down here lower, and there are also some patches, like some squares that are in there, so that's kind of an interesting um, design there. It's kind of cool that we've got those details. Uh, however, you do have to expect a plastic cape like this to hinder the articulation. Um, a cloth cape would have allowed for better posing, so this is going to get in the way just a bit. And actually, we're going to see the same kind of thing with her armor, so let's go ahead and talk articulation. That head's on a ball joint, so it's got a great range of motion. You can move it side to side, you can roll it around, even look up and down pretty decently. She doesn't look up too far, um, but it's what you can expect out of a standard ball joint. You got the same kind of ball joints at the shoulders, but this is where we're going to start having some issues. You'll notice that the armor completely hinders that joint. You can see the ball joint under the armor there, but look at this. It's totally uh, hitting onto her uh, chest armor there, so it 
makes it so that you can't raise the arms at all. And even on this side, the cape would totally hinder the movement anyway. Um, so you're not going to get a lot of movement out of her arms other than mostly just going up and down. Now she does have the swivels at the elbow, so you can see you can rotate the elbow all the way around as well as bend the elbow, so that's a really great range of motion. And then the hands are also jointed very nicely, so you can swivel the wrists as well as got a nice hinge joint so you can move the wrists up and down. She's got a nice joint in the torso that allows her to kind of rock around and turn side to side. That's how you also get her to look left and right because the joint at the waist does not twist. You can see that is locked in place. Uh, we've got the same kind of uh, hinge joints at the thighs, but again, the armor is hitting the belt here, and that is not able to be really moved. You can see it kind of turns side to side a little bit, but you're not going to be able to spread the legs out too far. You're going to run into the belt, uh, but you can move them side to side still. We also swivel at the upper thigh. We do have double joints in the knees, uh, very tight ratchet joints in the top part of the knee there, um, and then we've got some pretty good joints at the ankles there. You can see the ankles move forwards and backwards as well as rock side to side so she was built with some good articulation however the design of her armor and that plastic cape are definitely going to hinder the amount of poses you can get out of her all right, Captain Phasma comes with one accessory in the form of her unique blaster. Uh, you can see it's done in a slightly different color silver, but it does have a really nice black paint deco also on there to bring out those details. Uh, one really nice thing, just like with the Stormtroopers, which I actually missed in my Stormtrooper review, um, she's got a little peg on that blaster which can plug right into her right upper thigh. So that way she can holster the blaster at her side, which is a very nice touch. And of course, we can get her to hold onto that. Works best in the right hand because it's sculpted with the trigger finger. So it actually uh, holds perfectly onto that blaster rifle with the trigger finger right over the trigger. And one of the other things that's great about this, which so far is the only Phasma action figure that can do it, we can get two-handed blaster poses, which is a must. Something else kind of cool about this Phasma action figure, she's tall. This is a six inch scale line, but as you can see, Phasma here is actually about six and a half inches tall. Um, so she is quite a bit taller than the other First Order Stormtroopers, which is good because that's exactly how she has appeared so far in all of the trailers that we have seen. All right, guys, it's Phasma Parison time. <laughs> I think it's um, no surprise at this point that I have become a bit obsessed with Captain Phasma. So here she is standing alongside several other Captain Phasma action figures that have already been released, including the Hasbro 4-inch figure, the Disney Store Elite figure, the Funko Pop vinyl, and the Jack's Pacific 20-inch figure. So there you go, my friends. There is a look at the brand new six inch scale Captain Phasma, part of Hasbro's Black series. Um, really nice looking action figure. It's a bit of a bummer that her articulation isn't as good as a lot of people are probably hoping it would be. Uh, the sculpt of the armor definitely gets in the way of that, as well as that plastic cape. But she still looks really nice, and it's pretty great pairing her up with all of those baddies from the new Episode 7 film. And I personally am very happy to be adding this one to my shelf. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that we still get a nice vac metalized one somewhere down the road. So, as I said, she's been a bit tough to come by along with the rest of Series 2, but she is hitting store shelves right now. I actually stumbled upon mine in a Kmart store, so be sure you are checking everywhere. Happy hunting, my friends, and until next time.